Hello, nice to meet you. It is I, resident TikTok addict, ready to pretend that TikTok is actually a good use of my time because it gives me book recommendations. A lot of books are recommended to me on my For You page, very specifically to me through TikTok. So I thought maybe it's time for me to test if all these book recommendations I'm getting are actually good. If you're new here, welcome. On this channel, we have a little series going where I try different methods to find a book that is perfect for you, to find a book that is exactly what you love. So this is episode two of the search for a new favorite book uh, in which we try out TikTok recommendations. A lot of people have very different <laughs> opinions when it comes to TikTok recommendations. A lot of people love it, obviously. That's why it's so popular. That's why bookstores have little stands dedicated to book talk books. Um, but there are also a lot of people that really think that the recommendations are trash. <laughs> now, the cute thing about TikTok is, is that it has an algorithm. And the fact that the algorithm probably knows all my deepest, darkest secrets aside, it makes it so that a lot of the book recommendations that I get on my For You page are very specifically curated for me and might be very good recommendations. For example, a while ago, I read These Violent Delights by Micah Nemerever, which was recommended to me in like one very specific TikTok. And I love that book. It's become one of my new favorites. So I do have some hope. Um, so I chose three books that I see on my For You page a lot that are TikTok recommended books to me. And I want to try them, give them a little try, read them, see if I like it and see if the algorithm actually knew what it was doing when it recommended these books to me. <laughs> First off, we have an extremely divisive book and that is A Bunny by Mona Awad. It has a 3.5 on Goodreads. A lot of people love it and a lot of people absolutely despise it. We love taking risks. <laughs> it's supposedly Dark Academia Mean Girls meets Scream Queens meets The Craft. It's also supposedly extremely bizarre and weird, so I'm interested. I'm listening. Then we have A Certain Hunger. This book got recommended to me very often in a lot of TikTok videos that were like books about unhinged women. I cannot think of a more unhinged woman than a woman who is literally a cannibal and a mass murderer. I'm expecting this book to be like the movie Fresh, except from the perspective of Sebastian Stan, and then it's a woman. And then the last one, um, we have a book that wasn't specifically recommended to me, it's just generally popular on Book Talk, but I'm willing to take that risk um, because I'm very in the mood for romance, and this is a hate to love fake dating office romance. It is the Spanish love deception. People have been going crazy over this book. I'm just really in a mood for another romance book that just like consumes me completely. Let's see if we can find a new one of my favorite books or if I need to leave TikTok recommendations behind forever. I am gonna start with the Spanish Love Deception because I am in the mood for some romance. We have a book that wasn't specifically recommended to me. It's just generally popular on book talk, but I'm willing to take that risk. Well, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. So, the Spanish love deception. On the one hand, we have Catalina, quirky girl. And then we have Aaron, our broody, handsome love interest with the characterization of an air balloon, hot uh, and completely empty. I know a fun little drinking game that you could do with this book, and that is take a shot every time our love interest Aaron is described as tall, huge, massive, big, long, tall, any kind of reference to how insanely large he is. And you would, no joke, be slam drunk after a few chapters. I know a lot of people really, really love this book. I mean, why else? Of course, it would be such a popular book on TikTok. It's just, it really wasn't for me. And I totally understand why so many people especially love Aaron. I always heard about Aaron being like, the hottest love interest, you know? Um, and I get it because it's very clear that Aaron is just written to be as swoon-worthy and hot as possible. I personally really don't mind. I actually prefer it in my romance novels if both of the characters have some flaws that maybe make them a little less attractive, but I find it more realistic as characters. Aaron is just written to be super, super hot and swoony. Except the way that it's done, 
here's the thing. Every time Catalina heralds Aaron's behavior as so swoon-worthy and perfect, it is just decent human being behavior. He doesn't take advantage of you. He doesn't think you should starve yourself in order to fit the beauty standards. He's empathetic towards your problems. Wow. <laughs> when Jules Verne's characters went to the center of the earth, they found it. The bar for men. It is that low. So while I was reading the book, I just started to make notes because I knew that I wanted to talk about it in this video. Um, and one of the notes I just wrote, literally just talk to each other. Katarina and Aaron do not communicate in this book. There were so many problems and like moments of tension and moments of anxiety that I was like, this problem would not have to exist if you just communicated with each other. If you are spending pages and pages wondering about what the other person expects and not knowing what the other person expects, you know you could just ask them? The Spanish Love Deception Normally, it's a pretty long book for a romance, like 450 pages. The Spanish Love Deception, if they just talked to each other, nothing. Also, this book is mostly popular because it's very much marketed as enemies to lovers, which is why I was interested in it, you know? I was like, enemies to lovers, fake dating, office romance, I love that stuff. Supposedly, Aaron and Catalina hate each other. Catalina constantly tells us that they hate each other, but they hate each other for absolutely no reason. They just hate each other because the author said so and that's a trope people like that's kind of how it felt and it's funny because katarina is constantly like we cannot be in the same room for longer than one minute because we hate each other so much like oh we just cannot stand each other we despise each other and then they're just nice to each other the entire book the whole hate to love thing felt more like a contrived gimmick than a reflection of how these characters actually interacted with each other so yeah this book really wasn't it for me. I know it's super popular. I can understand that it might be really your thing. I think that there are way better romance books out there other than just he's not an asshole and therefore a good boyfriend candidate. <laughs> I guess I should have known when I decided to blindly pick up a book just because it was a TikTok sensation. Because the thing is, actually, I looked it up on Goodreads after I finished it, and it turns out that so many of the top reviews are super negative and had the exact same problems that I have right now. So that again just goes to show. I should not just pick up a book just because it's like hugely popular on TikTok. I'm not saying TikTok gives bad book recommendations. It's just that I could have easily avoided this if I just did a little bit of research into would this actually be the kind of book for me? And it turned out that it wasn't. We have our two other books that I'm going to read that are very, that I didn't just pick up because they're like a sensation that were very specifically recommended by the algorithm to me in videos that did not have like a lot of views. So I'm hoping that they are more personalized picks for me and there's a higher chance that I will actually end up enjoying them. This book. This book is properly unhinged. <laughs> There's no plot to this book other than that we basically follow our main character, the food critic, as she goes after multiple of her lovers. How she plans to kill them, how she plans to get away with it. Then she elaborately describes killing them and cutting them up and using some of their body parts to cook a delectable meal. It's like the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, except learning about um, how she fell out of love with every man. We learn about um, how she kills them all and then eats them. It's so fascinating. It feels weird to admit that. Um, I promise you, I do not have any malicious intent. Uh, I, do, I do not plan on doing what she does. Um, 
but yet it is so fascinating. The writing style is very very pompous and it might be difficult to get through but I got used to it very quickly and it's definitely ironically pompous. Ten years ago I read The Hunger Games and today I read A Certain Hunger by Chelsea D. Summers. It is the natural progression of life. I have no idea how this book is gonna end, what it's gonna lead up to because there's not really a plot. Um, so I'm excited to finish it and then talk about what I think. while I have my breakfast before I start my internship work for the day. So I'm going to continue reading A Certain Hunger and I only have about 20 pages left. So I actually think I might be able to finish it today. book let's discuss a certain hunger as I cut open uh, an apple <laughs> would have loved to have a human organ here to cut open to stay you know on brand with the story but alas it's just an apple it's difficult to talk about what's so fun what I how I enjoyed a certain hunger because it's hard to explain to people why it's fun to read about a female serial killer that eats her victims but it is actually kind of fun to see her explain the plans that she makes to kill her victims and how like the smart things she comes up with to stay out of the hands of the police. And, but I do feel like towards the end, it makes it very clear. It almost explicitly states to the reader what the point of the story is. Um, and I guess you could say it's a little bit on the nose, but I personally don't mind. And I think I wanna, I wanna read the, the lines that I, that I annotated that to me kind of perfectly capture the point of the story. Unfettered violence, anger unleashed, the will to destroy, the need to undo. These acts run counter to everything we like to think we know about the feminine nature. Yet women weren't always angels in the house and angels weren't always benevolent beings. And then a few chapters later. Our unshakable belief in women's essential goodness is a wondrous drooling thing. It can almost be cathartic to read about a female main character who is the antithesis to what is expected and thought about what a woman should be, you know, like non-violent and sweet and always caring for other people and emotional but never angry. And the main character in this book is the opposite of that. She is very calm, unemotional, except kind of angry, very violent at times, only cares about herself, never cares for other people, and ultimately finds gruesome pleasure from it in the form of literal cannibalism. I personally really enjoyed reading a female character like this and I think that's what makes a lot of people enjoy this book so much so I would actually highly recommend this. I had a good time. I think that's enough cannibalistic stories for now. <laughs> I will now continue to read Bunny, which now that I'm saying that, I don't know. I cannot guarantee that that book will not contain some form of cannibalism. Who knows what I'm in for? Guys, I'm... <laughs> okay, I, I, I need to talk. I need to talk. I'm very tempted to say, why did no one tell me earlier that I need to read this book, but literally everyone has been telling me to read this book for a very long time now. Now I'm not very far in yet, but I'm really, really, and I'm loving this book so far. Bunny is one of those dark academia books that really also critiques academia and critiques certain structures in among students, among people in general, among humanity, among academia, and I really enjoy that. Something I've been thinking about lately. Uh, I'm going in rent mode right now, I have thoughts. <laughs> a lot of dark academia, like If We Were Villains and These Violent Delights, have a kind of tense 
vibe to it, a tense undertone that is very based on kind of a, a tension that exists between two men in the story. I feel like a lot of Dark Academia is very focused on the tension between the men in the story and I feel like it's very informed by how men are taught to behave, you know? Not really talking to each other about how you really feel, not really talking about your emotions, most emotions coming out in anger, are not really sharing their real emotions with each other and that causes a lot of the underlying tension in the books. And I think what Bunny is doing so far is that it is showing how to write this kind of tension in a dark academia way, but it's very informed by the experience of female friendships and the interactions between women because we're not told to hide our emotions all the time and let our emotions out in anger, right? It's usually the exact opposite. And I feel like the way like the bunnies interact with each other, they're always like, oh, I love you, bunny. You're so amazing, bunny. But it's so nice that it has a very sinister undertone. And I feel like this is gonna be a very good exploration of how female friendships can be very sinister and have this very tense undertone that is very different from how it happens between men in most other dark academia books. Long story short, I'm very much enjoying this book even though I'm only maybe 40 pages in. When I was reading that bit, naively I thought to myself, this book isn't that weird. I don't really understand why so many people think this is that weird. And then I read some more and it got pretty weird. <laughs> but in the best way possible. I haven't finished it, but I just want to give a little update because I even got myself my own copy um, because this one I lent from my housemate, but I wanted to annotate and like write in it and put sticky tabs in it because there's so much, there's so much. <laughs> so I got my own copy. I just want to mention that this is the first time that I decided to start underlining in my books. Well, I already started doing it a little bit with a certain hunger, but with this one, I'm just constantly underlining things and I'm really enjoying it. And I don't know why I never did this sooner. I mean, I know why it's because there's this irrational fear of writing in your books, but I know I'm not gonna get rid of this book because I'm loving it. Annotating is great. I highly recommend everyone doing it, um, but I'm going on a little weekend away now. Uh, so hopefully I can finish it in that time and then we can finally talk about it because oh my gosh and I am excited to talk about this book. <laughs> Hello. I just came back from the camp, so I'm tired. <laughs> I didn't feel like putting on makeup, but I did spend a lot of time reading in the past few days and I finished Bunny by Mona Allard. As you can see by the amount of tabs, um, I have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of there was just a lot. I didn't expect this quick into my search for a new favorite book. We would find one and it would be in a TikTok video of all things. So imagine me at this camp. It's late in the evening. We're all very cold snuggling on couches. Some people are talking, other people are reading books. I finished this book and I just like internally have my mind blown and need like a few minutes to process and I immediately take out my phone to search what other people on the internet thought of this book. And the interesting thing is that I immediately found out that so many different people have completely different interpretations of this story because it's so vague, there's so much happening. I feel like you could interpret it into in so many different ways, which by the way, might also have been the point. They even talk about that in the book. Wow, it's so meta. <laughs> Personally, what I really appreciated about this book is there's many, many, many pieces of media out there that criticize or satirize the um, Mean Girls 
female friendship kind of thing. Scream Queens, Mean Girls, the movie. Uh, but it's always kind of done from an outside perspective and I really appreciated how this book took it from the inside and remained understanding towards these women. And it makes sure to also do the opposite and criticize the not like other girls stereotype in a way that I really enjoyed. For everyone here who loved YA books back in the day that were full of the not like other girls main characters that we so love to relate to, I think this book is like a great thematic sequel to that phase in our lives. Also, this book does an amazing job at exploring the idea of letting go of things that no longer serve you. And it does this in a... You know what? I'm not gonna say more because it's just gonna be spoilers. I will share my spoilery thoughts on this book in the Purple Time Discord. But just, oh my god. Oh my god. If you are one of those people that loves reading books, just trying to figure out what the heck is going on, going back and forth, trying to figure out what the point is, you're gonna love this. But I totally understand that so many people hate this book because if you don't like vagueness in your stories, if you don't like having to go to far extents to try and figure out what the heck just happened, you're gonna hate this. You're definitely gonna hate this. So it's not gonna be uh, everyone's cup of tea, but it definitely was mine. It's a funny experience reading this book at camp because you can imagine every time someone asked me what the book I was reading was about, I just had to be like, um, well, <laughs> how do I explain this? I don't even, I'm not even really sure about what's happening. But there's this clique of cultish pretty blonde girls, um, and they perform weird satanistic rituals together, and also I'm really loving it. Thank you, TikTok, for compelling me to pick up this this wonderful book. <laughs> I think the conclusion of this video is that TikTok is a great place for recommendations, but it's always a safer bet to go for TikTok recommendations from smaller videos that you know are more niche and more catered towards you uh, on your For You page than TikTok books that are just generally recommended to literally everyone who gets on BookTok. Right? TikTok recommendations really aren't bad. It's just always better to just go after the ones that are more personalized to you. I am going to take this as an excuse uh, for spending more time scrolling on TikTok. If you want to talk to other people uh, about the books that I mentioned in this video, I will add them to the Purple Time Discord, uh, make a channel for them so you guys can talk about them and I'll also share more of my opinions on there as well. I will leave the link to the Discord in the description. Other than that, you can subscribe, follow me on social media, and just um, stick around. And I hope that I will see you in next week's video. I think that's it. Okay, I hope you have a nice day and I will see you soon.